Hello and welcome to another tech review you didn't know you needed. Today we'll be looking at some Steam Deck docks. First up will be the official dock that just got released and then we will be also looking at the JSOX dock revision 2, the uh, HB0603. We will start by looking at the firmware update process then trying to duplicate the Nintendo Switch experience while in game mode and finally desktop mode. We will wrap up with some comparisons between the two and I'll conclude with some thoughts and my recommendation. So this is one really cool feature about the official Steam Deck dock is that it will detect that there's a firmware update the first time you plug in the dock to the Steam Deck and the Steam Deck itself will update the dock. So here we are in God of War playing in handheld mode. So let's say I want to dock this and play it on a big screen TV. So first thing you have to do is worry about the controller. So here is a standard Xbox controller. Turn it on. It's already been previously paired. Great, it's paired. But as you can tell, controls aren't transferring over to the Xbox controller. It's doing nothing. It's still tied to the Steam Deck. So what you do is you hit the Steam button come over to controller settings and then you'll see two controllers up here what you want to go down is to reorder and then move the Xbox controller first now exit back out and voila now have control on the Xbox controller versus the built-in Steam Deck controls right so that's your first step now we're going to go ahead and dock it so for the dock scenario, we're going to have a pretty simple setup, just uh, HDMI and USB-C power. The HDMI cable is hooked up to my receiver and then is hooked up to an older Vizio 1080p 80-inch HDTV. You can see the controllers are working fine. The audio is actually coming through my home theater setup. That means it's outputting through the HDMI, which is great. couple of things that you can adjust on a per game basis if you go to this gear icon while you're connected to an external display and go to properties under general you can see default resolution here you can pick different outputs if you want by default it's going to always just output the native display resolution so in this case this is just an older 80 inch 1080p television so it's going to output 1080p, but internally I've set it at 1280 by 800, and then it's just going to use FSR to upscale it. Now, if you run into some AV issues, you might want to go into settings, like if the audio is coming out of your speakers for some reason. Come over here to audio, and then you can see here speakers or external device. Just make sure you pick external device. And that should be it. So let's say you're in the game and now you want to go back to handheld mode. So let's see how that looks like. First of all, I'm going to take the controller and pop the battery out. So that's just going to simulate me turning off the external control and see what happens. Next, I'm going to go undock it. Now I'm undocked. I cannot control the game at all. So you just hit the Steam button, you go to controller settings. Go to reorder controllers and you'll see here that the Steam Deck controller is set to 2. You just want to click on it, push up on the D-pad and I'll set it to 1. Once it's set to 1, you're good to go. And now I have full control of the game again using the built-in Steam Deck controls. Now most of the time this controller swapping won't be really an issue if you do all your controllers set up before you start the game. So if you turn on your external controller first before you launch the game, usually it'll just work just fine. So 
I'm just showing you the worst case scenario so you know how to handle it. In this next section, we're going to take a look at desktop mode and give you a few tips and tricks I've learned. I'm going to fill all the holes on the dock and also run a few tests on storage and network throughput. The first tip I have for you is hot plugging and unplugging the dock while in desktop mode. So you'll notice in display configuration, you can rearrange your monitors as usual. In this case, I have two external monitors connected, plus you have the built-in screen of the Steam Deck. So it's really a three monitor setup. So I have one on display port, which is the 4K 60 Hertz 32 inch monitor you see on the left. And then I also have a 27 inch 1080p panel on the right. When you unplug the, da the dock and then you plug it back in, it won't actually enable those external monitors. It'll recognize them in display configuration, but it won't enable them. So you have to go through the dropdown, pick each monitor, click on the enable button, pick your primary, rearrange them, all that. So it's not really good at remembering your, your setup, especially when you're hot plugging things back in. So just keep that in mind. In this next test, we're going to take a look at USB 3.0 throughput. I'm going to have a PNY 256 gigabyte external USB 3.0 flash drive. I'm going to copy a 5 gigabyte file from that to the internal SSD storage. The flash drive is formatted in EXFAT, so it mounts in Linux without issue. I'm copying using the Dolphin File Explorer. As you can see, we are definitely getting USB 3.0 speeds. Now I'm going to take that same 5 gigabyte file, which is stored on the internal SSD, and copy it over to a SMB network file share. This uh, file share is on just a regular spinning hard drive, external hard drive connected to a Raspberry Pi 4. It is connected over wired gigabit ethernet. Looks like we're hitting upwards of 500 megabits per second. So for real world, that's pretty good for gigabit. Now let's take a look at the JSOX Revision 2 Steam Deck dock. I'm not even sure why they made the Revision 1. I always thought that was kind of pointless with only USB 2.0 and not even gigabit ethernet. It seemed really kind of a, a waste. So I'm glad they came out with the version 2 and they came out with many other versions like one with a NVMe M.2 slot and some RGB now. So I, I think this is the version for the money is probably the, the sweet spot. It has all the features I want. It has gigabit ethernet, has USB 3.0, so that's great. Now, flashing the firmware on this thing is rather cumbersome, and you have to have a Windows machine, so keep that in mind. Just uh, download the zip file off their site. I will link the, I'll leave the link in the description. And then take a look at the readme inside the zip file, because it's different depending on which version you have. Of course, here I'm flashing version 2, which means all you have to do is connect the, the USB-C PD port on the back of the dock to your computer. Now you can use a USB-C to USB-C cable if you have a computer that has a USB-C port, but a USB-A to USB-C cable worked fine. That's what I did here. Now, once you've done that, you will hear the standard USB tone for a device connecting, and then you just want to launch the update program. After that, you want to click on the FW update option and then pick your firmware, which is C002. Now, just a, as a warning, once you pick the file name, it immediately starts flashing. So there's no additional prompt or any confirmation. It's just going to start flashing. Just wait a few minutes, and once you're done, you're good. The JSOX uh, doc seems to work just fine. Very similar to the official doc. No real issues. <laughs> So now for a real quick test, we're going to do the same thing that we did with the official dock. First, copying a 5 gigabyte file from a USB 3.0 flash drive to the internal SSD storage, and then copying that same file over a SMB network share. As you can see, the results are very similar, so we can confirm that, yes, the ports, the Ethernet, the USB 3.0 ports are performing to spec and as expected. So let's do a quick comparison between these two docks. So here's the official one. And as you'll notice that um, it has a bit of rubber on the bottom, but the rest of it's kind of hard plastic. So this front lip is actually kind of sharp feeling. It's pretty hard. Same thing with the back. Um, if you look at the, the bottom, it's all rubberized all the way around. So for the, the label in the middle, so a lot of grip there. If you look at the ports, it's kind of nice that all the ports are on the back. And you also notice that you get a display port and an HDMI port and this kind of cluster of three USB 3 ports and a gigabit ethernet RJ45 jack. So it's all on the back, that's kind of nice. Now, if we look at the JSOX one, it's actually the well of it is quite a bit bigger. So 
So I think this will accommodate if, uh, a case. So if you use a Steam Deck with the case always on it, you probably want to go with the JSOC so you have this uh, wider base, this wider cradle to fit it in. It does have rubber on the back, on the bottom, and also on the, uh, on the front here. It has uh, four rubber feet on the bottom, and it has almost the same ports. It only has an HDMI, no display port, and the RJ45 gigabit Ethernet is located on the side. If you compare the two, it's, you can see the, uh, the official dock is quite a bit smaller in all dimensions. So just uh, keep that in mind. Also, you notice the length of the USB cables looks like the uh, official dock is just a tad longer. Here's another comparison. You can see the two docks compared to one of the stands I have. I do like the stand and uh, it's pretty close to the size of the official dock. One thing that's a little bit concerning about the JSOC stock is the coverage of the back end air intake vents. So if you'll notice on the back, it covers maybe 25% of quite a few of the vents on the back. Now it probably, you know, in actuality, that's probably not that big of a deal, but it is still a little bit annoying that it's designed that way where the official dock perfectly uh, clears it. Here's another option that might be worth looking at, the iVoller. Steam Deck dock. Anyways, it's $45. That's the same, basically the same price as the JSOX. It has all the ports on the back, which is nice. It doesn't seem to block the vents either. So this seems like a popular option. Um, I have not personally tried it, but you might, might be worth checking out. So some final thoughts and the verdict. Overall, I would recommend the official dock over the JSOX with a few caveats. First, if you use a case with your Steam Deck, then you will probably want to avoid the official dock since I've heard the fit is pretty precise and won't accommodate the additional thickness a case would add. Second, it is the most expensive at $90, but I personally believe the price is somewhat justified. First, you do get another charger, which is always nice to have. Second, it's official, so you know it will be supported well and updating the firmware is super easy and convenient. And third, there's that display port output for two external monitors, which is really nice for productivity. But if you're on a tight budget or use a case, the JSOX is a nice alternative. The RJ45 port on the side and the blocked vents are a bit annoying though. Well, I hope you found this video informative. If you did, a sub would be greatly appreciated. If you want to learn more about the Steam Deck, check out some of my other videos, including a four and a half hour long complete guide. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next one.